What's up, guys? Welcome to the unofficial NCLEX podcast. My name is Katie Cleaver, and I am your host. And the title of today's episode is Use Appropriate Technique to Set Up a Sterile Field and Maintain a Sepsis. So in the PDF, I put a link to the definition of asepsis or aseptic technique versus a clean technique. So it's important important to have a distinction here because it's not practical or realistic to do things completely sterile when the, when it's not necessary. Um, a lot of the things we do are clean. Like, like the gloves that you take out of the box when you walk into the room, those are clean gloves. They're not sterile gloves, okay? So there's clean things you do and aseptic things you do. So clean is most things like washing your hands. Um, things are cl- kept pretty clean, but they're not actually sterile technique. So clean thing, like giving an IV push med, um, you know, um, cleaning somebody up after they went to the bathroom, um, inserting a peripheral IV, um, removing a catheter. Th- those are clean things. But um, aseptic things are very different. Um, so th- or surgical asepsis and like... Um, sterile technique that's very different it is um sterile gloves and i don't know if you've ever seen them and if you haven't it's i really encourage you to go and actually it's probably a check off of yours at some point to put on sterile gloves and remove them appropriately so you put on you get a sterile field ready and you you're putting on your sterile gloves and they are packaged differently they're not just in a box the way they are now for anyone to touch any of them but they they are sterile and you put them on a very specific way. And once you put on sterile gloves, you cannot touch anything that is not sterile or you break sterile field. I encourage you if you're at a facility already or if you're doing clinicals to look up the policies and procedures actually at the hospital about sterile technique and maintaining asepsis and what do you do if the sterile field is broken. Um, In episode 77, and if you're looking at the PDF, I have a a great reference for common breaks in sterile technique, which is pretty, it was pretty all-inclusive by the AORN journal. Thought it was really good. So check that out. But you got to make sure that you follow the appropriate protocol if it's broken because there's a risk of infection. So you as the bedside nurse, though, how often are you truly doing this? Because, you know, if you're in the OR and you're a surgical tech, you're going to be living in sterile world. And if you're in the OR, that's like all you you're living, you're doing everything and very, very used to sterile technique. But in on the floor in the ICU, there's only very, there's a few scenarios where you're sterile. One of the big ones is changing a central line dressing. And another one of the most frequent ones is inserting a Foley catheter. Those are both sterile procedures. And you must utilize the appropriate technique to set up the field. So that doesn't mean you open up the box and you put everything wherever you want. And then you put on your sterile gloves. The first thing you do is you get things ready and usually you have someone else there that's clean that can help you kind of do things, but you open up whatever it is and touching it appropriately where you're revealing your sterile um, kit. And then usually there's a set of sterile gloves setting on top after you open it and the outside of it's considered clean um, and the inside of it's considered sterile. And then you open it and you either have your pack of sterile gloves that fits you or the, you use the ones in the kit and you take it out and then you go somewhere different and then you open up the sterile gloves and then you put them on in a very specific way. I will not explain that here because it's really, it's something you have to see and, and I can't really describe it, but you put on your sterile gloves, gloves appropriately and only after you have sterile gloves on can you touch the rest of that sterile stuff. Which is, and then if you touch something not sterile, you've broken the sterile field. So, it's important to, I think it's really helpful to observe people do this first and then do it. Because you also have to think about, okay, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing this on a patient. So I have to, they, if, can they understand what I'm saying and can they follow commands? Like if I tell them not to move, will they really not move? You know, if not, we, we probably need to have somebody else in there to help. So there's a lot of things you to consider. So I, it's important, I think, for you to visualize this, um, somebody doing something with sterile technique. And I would hope in nursing school at some point you're going to see someone insert a Foley catheter. Maybe you won't do it yourself, but you'll see them set up their sterile technique. Um, and I remember my first clinical experience, I saw that because it's a pretty common thing. Also taking care of a central line and changing the dressing. That's a great 
sterile technique to observe. Um, and then if you're in the OR and you get a chance to observe in the OR, pay attention before the surgery starts, watch that scrub tech or that OR tech or maybe the circulator or whomever is setting up the sterile field, which is typically the scrub you know, tech or the um, OR tech. Um, watch them. Watch them very closely and see how they're doing things and what they touch and what they don't. It's really interesting to watch, so I encourage you to do that. So that concludes episode 75. Use appropriate technique to set up, a, set up and maintain a sterile field. This has been another episode of the unofficial Inclex Prep Podcast. To get the massive PDF guide that goes along with this podcast, head over to nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's nrsng.com slash Inclex Prep. That's a free download that you can take with you anywhere and you can basically have this podcast in text format. Our goal here at NRSNG.com is to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to succeed in nursing school, on the NCLEX, and in your life as a nurse. We want you to succeed, and we want you to become part of this movement of nurses that is dedicated and motivated to learning and becoming the best nurse that they can possibly be. My name is John Haas, RNCCRN, and I'm the founder of NRSNG.com, and I sincerely thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you for taking this step in your journey. Now you know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.